So what kind of tools did these carpenters have at their disposal? The tools that's here um, on display would have been used for every day of uh, use in a carpenter's work. Um, first of all, you can see this top one here, an awl it's called, and that was for holding the holes for the legs. And then we have a range of chisels here as well, of different shapes and sizes as well that would have been used. We have brad awls as well, which was very important for our screws. And you can see we have the hammer as well, the claw hammer and some pliers and that. And this particular one here as well is the hand planer. And that was for putting maybe grooves um, in the likes of maybe dresses and some larger furniture. And then of course we have the hand saws here as well. And then we have the, the mallet and then we have the hand planer here as well, a jack plane they're called, and we've quite a few of those. We've the claw hammer, of course, was very important as well, and we've the gauge as well, which was marking out uh, the design in some cases on, on pieces. The tools were made uh, locally by the blacksmith in the area. The, the carpenter maybe would approach him and uh, tell him what was needed. There would be hand forged uh, tools, you know, and hand forged tools like always kept the sharpness. They would go hand in hand, the carpenter and the blacksmith. How much has this practice changed in the 21st century? Let's ask the Blake brothers. The chairs would have been made a lot by hand and hand tools in, when it was made here in the old schoolhouse originally in the 60s. But when they moved to the newer place in the 70s, they got in machinery to do a lot of the heavy work. So the hand tools were done for the carving of the, the, the shamrock at the back and fitting the chairs together. When we started here we used to use hand planes like this to finish joining tops before we glued the tabletops up. Nowadays we don't need to, the machines are better, we don't need to use it at all. This is a screwdriver we used to use before for, join, for screwing down tops of tables and stuff before we started using the cordless screwdrivers. When we're making the chairs, we start off the back leg, so we, we'd get them out of a big block of four inch teak, and we'd have to cross cut them to size and then bandsaw the leg out and do the morsing and tenants on it then and carve the shamrock on the back. This is the, well, we call it the old Irish chair known as the Toom chair or the Sligo chair. It's very distinctive that it has a one piece back leg that's got out of a single block of timber. The seat then, is next to be made off of the back and it is made from four pieces of timber in a triangle. These are mortised and tented with dowels put through. The front legs go through the front of the leg and they are wedged. The peg there is, 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 the, is the main joint of the chair, it keeps the whole chair together. This is the, the old Irish armchair. It is different from the chair that the, the, the seat is a lot longer, wider. This joint here is a fairly difficult joint to do because you, it's, it's in on the front leg. You have to get the exact measurement of the leg that will fit in tightly, but not too tight that it won't split there. We have the tenant in there, it, it, it gives the height of the seat and it also secures the leg and for the arm to go on to. And then there's lathe work done here for the round tenant, which is pegged as well. Our Irish chair, Tradition Revisited, focuses on one particular type of object, a chair, and one particular design of chair, the three-legged Sligo or Tomb chair. I hope this exhibition shows that just looking at one object in a museum can be really interesting. You can be intrigued about who was the first person to make this chair. Perhaps you might even think about making one yourself. Or you might think about your own chairs. All of the chairs you have sat on, and which was your favourite? Who might have made it? And what materials have they used? The National Museum of Ireland Country Life invites you to visit. The museum is for everybody. Come and see for yourself. Explore, learn and enjoy what the museum has to offer.